Hi, I'm Glenn Parry, and welcome to Case Study Research. So let's talk through one of the leading papers on case study research. This is Building Theories from Case Study Research by Kathleen Eisenhart, 1989. What we'll do here is focus on table one, which really takes us through the thinking that she provides in this paper. So what it is, it takes you through step by step through how you build theory from case study research. So the first step getting started, the activity is the defining of the research, which focuses your efforts. What are the a priori constructs that help you provide the grounding to future con constructs? And getting started, it's neither theory nor hypothesis. So you've got to retain theoretical flexibility uh, when you're developing your, your case study. So you don't want to be too rigid because you might have to change. Often we will go in with a fairly fixed idea on what we want to do and try and test that. But you've got to stay open to the possibility of this changing. When you're selecting the cases, you're going to have to specify a population where you're going to get your cases from. There's going to be extraneous variation within that, and that will provide greater external validity. So you are trying to choose a specific subset of cases, but there will be variation in that, and that will just help make, make the generalization more valid of, of what you're trying to do. Uh, it's theoretical sampling, not random sampling, really focusing on, on selecting cases that will be theoretically useful or interesting, something that may replicate or extend theory or fill conceptual gaps. So you're, you're picking the cases for a very particular reason. Don't just randomly pick them. When you're developing the instruments, the protocols for your study, uh, you've got multiple data collection methods you might use. Um, you're looking at grounding your theory by triangulation of evidence. So finding, you know, maybe interviews, maybe uh, archival material, uh, maybe secondary data from the web, uh, really to help pull together and confirm that what you're finding is right. Uh, you might use qualitative and quantitative data combined to give you this synergistic view of evidence. Uh, you might use multiple investigators that will give you different perspectives, different interpretations, and therefore strengthen whatever theoretical insights you may develop. Then we talk about entering the field. Uh, this is beginning your field work, collecting that empirical data. Ideally, you overlap data collection and analysis. This speeds the analysis, but really why we do it is it's helpful to adjust during data collection. Again, it's that idea of remaining flexible and looking at what's going on in the data and theory and saying, well, actually, I need to modify this a little bit. This flexibility you know, it's an, it also allows you to be more opportunistic in your data collection methods. You can take advantage of emerging themes, maybe change the questions so you can test those themes to make sure other people agree that maybe something unique that you spotted is really true. Analyzing data, you're going to look at within case analysis. So within a case, you're gaining familiarity with data and the preliminary theory generation. You might use cross case if you've got multiple cases, pattern searching using different techniques, looking beyond the initial techniques. You might see impressions, you might get evidence through using different lenses, but you're looking for a pattern within multiple uh, data sets. Then you're shaping your hypothesis. And you might tabulate the evidence of each construct that will help you sharpen the definition of validity and construct measurability. I always ask my students to look at sharpening the construct definitions, being really clear so there's no ambiguity in what they're saying. You're looking for replication uh, logics. So do we see this numerous times? That helps extend and confirm the, the, the theory. And we look at for the evidence why behind relationships. I mean, theory explains 
why something happens. And if you can see or somebody explains to you in multiple instances why this is happening, that builds the internal validity of the, of the case you are making. The next step is enfolding literature. And this is comparison with conflicting literature initially to build internal validity, raise theoretical level and sharpen construct definition again. So really here you're looking for literature that disagrees with you and you can say, say look, my empirical evidence says that, you know, in this context, in my case, this current theory does not apply and this is why. And you might also find similar literature and you say, well, in my case, look, it's the same. So we find that, that there's similarity and therefore we, we can confirm that this is this is true. And then reaching closure, when you've reached theoretical saturation, this is really the end of the research when marginal improvements become small, no matter what other work you do. So let's summarize. The strengths of case research is theory building is an iterative process that allows you to focus on one step at a time. That's quite useful when you're trying to do a PhD. There is back and forth between steps. You may have to go back to the beginning, but the learning remains. There's, there's a high chance of theory building. Ultimately, you're trying to contribute to theory. Data collection is designed to test or develop theory. Potential emergent theory can be tested in context measured and the hypothesis refined because you're working with people or data or information. And as your theories are emerging, you can go back and test and test and test. The resultant theory is likely to be empirically valid because the insights are generated from your primary evidence, often from practice or, or from, from secondary data, wherever that, that is coming from. But it is uh, empirically valid because it's theoretically driven. And this approach also helps us when little is known about a phenomenon. Cases do not necessarily require previous literature or empirical studies, though I always caution against uh, not having a thorough literature review um, because, you know, particularly for a PhD, it's very high risk to go that way. If you've got a thorough literature review, you've developed instruments, tools, frameworks that you want to test, a case study is a great way of doing that then you can really understand where the gaps are. And they might not be where you initially thought they were, and you've got this flexibility to go and say, ah, oh, actually, the gap's there, not where I thought. There are weaknesses. Research can lead to overly complex theory. There's a lot of data. <clears throat> People often try and cover all the variables. You really want to focus on what's important, what's strongest, what can you really claim. And it can be idiosyncratic. That means too specific to a context because theory is built from the bottom up. You know, you found something in a specific context and therefore it may be difficult to generalize. So that's a nice short summary, I hope, of uh, Kathleen Arnott's and Hart's paper, Building Theories from Case Study Research. It's published in the Academy of Management Review. Uh, I hope you'll take some time to read it.